Hello, welcome back to the Red Path, and for another episode of Chill Game Learn. And today, we're going to discuss mental health, and how the hobby, the game, and the real world affects it. Okay, so obviously this is going to be a pretty serious episode. Um, as I've talked about before, these chill game learns, they're going to they're gonna be a little bit of everything. Sometimes we'll touch on issues in the community. Sometimes they'll be all about nerding out over some lore or some hobby work or whatever. Today, given some recent events um, over the last few weeks... And some things I've seen online, uh, not not in this community, but just in general. Um, I, I wanted to talk about it because I think it's something that needs to be talked about. And it, it has been occasionally. Um, there's been a few 40k related channels which have discussed it. Um, not always to the best response from the wider community, or perhaps a minority of the community that decides to make themselves very loud. Um... I don't really expect too much negative uh, response to this one. Um, if it happens, it happens. Um, but this is something I, I, I want to talk about. And I think um, it might be important for a lot of people watching this to hear as well. So the first thing I want to say um, is completely caveat this. I'm in no way a professional. Um, I do not work in anything related to mental health or psychology or anything like that um i briefly studied psychology at school um back in the uk for my a levels um didn't get a very good grade um however on a personal note i have and continue to struggle with some mental health issues um nothing you know i don't want to say not serious but you know we'll talk about that a little bit later i think Second thing I want to caveat is that I'm obviously approaching this from a uh, cis straight white male um, perspective. Um, however, I don't want this to exclude or alienate anyone who doesn't come from that perspective, from that point of view, from that life experience. Um, I can only discuss with any kind of experience my own issues, but I think there's um, we all deal with real life. Some are obviously... Uh, more marginalized and have a lot more systemic oppression against them um, but something I want to you know extend here and th this is particularly for um, other men you know other white men um, yes we we have issues and a, a common thing that seems to crop up whenever there's any discussion related to women's rights or uh, gay rights or trans rights or any, anything to do with treating people equally and fairly um, is well what about us what about suicide rates amongst men what about you know uh, injustice in child custody arrangements or, or you know lots of other things this kind of what about ism and the issue is never that these things don't exist the issue is that when someone else is speaking, when a woman is speaking or a person of color is speaking and saying, I have this problem, I need help, or can you acknowledge this or whatever the situation may be. Oftentimes we, us men particularly, will jump in and, well, what about this? That's not how we need to approach it. And I'm going to talk about that, but they are real problems. You know, suicide rates uh, among you know are very high, especially amongst young men. Um, and this is a real problem. So you know, here's a situation where we are not interrupting someone else speaking. Um, but as I did mention at the beginning, um, in light of recent events, uh, you know, in the UK a couple of weeks ago, um, I'm making this with that in mind. So there is um i'm acknowledging you know the situation and the you know the absolutely disgusting treatment of of women whilst it is not in itself a mental health issue it feels like every time something like this some an absolute fucking tragedy happens 
to a woman or to a person of color or whoever the men roll in what about us well here we go guys here's where here, here's here's us speaking here I'm, I'm gonna share my thoughts and you are welcome to comment or message or whatever and this this is an area for you now we're not talking over someone right this is an invitation to discuss these problems and any of the other problems that affect men they are no they are not more important but they're also not less important it's just the tone and the timing and a whole combination of things and you know being a, being a bit fucking sensitive to other people and not steamrolling in and what about me it's not all about us it's about everybody right okay hopefully i i know i dribble on but hopefully i explained what, how what i mean there so um the next thing i want to talk about before I really get into talking about everything um is mental health is health it's pretty much a very new science or top you know sub subset of of medicine um you know i'm sure we're all familiar with some of the you know history lesson medieval pictures of people getting you know drilled into their head to cure the common cold and things like that but actual scientific mental health is is a relatively new thing you know the last hundred years really and even then not really i mean that's just a, an acknowledgement of it um now yes the, there always has been a, a basic understanding but i'm talking about you know real research and um, things like that mental health is health feeling depressed having a bad day uh, and when i say depressed i mean you know a actual clinical depression dealing with that um if, if it hits you in waves or maybe uh, it's chronic or whatever um dealing with things like that just everyday stress you know the 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 demands of everyday life whether it's work or your family or just your just anything things affect us and they essentially and this is an incredibly reductive way of looking at it but these things affect our emotions which affects the hormones in our brain the chemical reactions in our brain and may cause imbalances or instabilities which is essentially a, is a physiological problem now it's has psychological ramifications you know affects our mood and our behavior and our drive and our motivation and things like that and there is it's so much deeper than that and i do not mean to reduce or belittle any particular you know um psychological or mental um health issue that someone might have I, again I'm, I'm not a professional i'm just trying to be as respectful as possible but mental health is health and like just about every health problem that we would see our gp for generally there aren't cures there is preventative action and there is treatment there's there's um getting rid of the symptoms dumb, numbing down the symptoms um and for the most part a lot of mental health issues are the same we can't necessarily cure a lot of things but we can make things better and i'm hoping that in this this talk maybe maybe there's a little bit of a you know a eureka moment in someone who's watching or listening and you know ho hopefully we can push some people further down the path of, of getting treatment or getting help or, or wh whatever is needed in a particular case um and also because you know i touched on um this is coming from my perspective um but with as much respect as i can to people who don't have who don't share a similar perspective or point of view on life or um approach to life or ex life experiences i'm going to talk about you know the demands and the you know the, the the weight the burden of toxic masculinity and what that is because i'm sure some people listen in like oh here we go and I, I, i'd ask you just listen because i used to be there and think oh here we go we're, we're man bashing again and no it's really not um i i i don't want to because uh, i've got a, a script of notes basically and i don't want to veer off too much now 
but please just hold on because toxic masculinity and patriarchal patriarchal society sorry hurt men absolutely hurt men they stop us from truly enjoying our masculinity if you, if you are you know masculine identify a man you and you, you like manly things whether you want to go chopping trees in the in the woods or playing you know physical contact sports not that these are necessarily masculine things or that are unique to masculinity but it's the, the sort of things that we lump in with a, a masculine man right <clears throat> nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with being masculine at all nothing wrong with having a big beard or you know being strong and whatever but there are things that are wrong being you know abusively violent not dealing with our emotions not being able to talk to people a lot of these things and and, and that's something i'm going to go into here okay so one last thing before i really start um some of the people that have uh, emailed me or messaged me with uh, their experiences or thoughts and comments, um, I'm going to read them out. Obviously, all personal information is omitted and edited out. Um, but I'm going to read them out in a way that may differ to what they actually wrote, but the actual text will be on screen. So, you know, just, just because some some things, like maybe I'm going to correct it, a spelling error or something and but i want to put their original language on the screen out, out of respect for them taking the time to contact me um and obviously everyone's anonymous okay so let's get on to the first kind of bullet point i've got here and that's the importance of recreation and hobbying and obviously i'm gonna link all this subject in to 40k the hobby and and the world eaters i've found a way um so the hobby in general painting kit bashing playing a game reading books vegging out and 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 watching youtube videos or listening to audiobooks however you particularly enjoy your warhams right or do you play a sport or do you, do you, you know all the things we do that de-stress us right that, that allow us to to breathe um these are these are such important things, right? Um, I don't do it nearly enough, but, and I wish I did it more. And I need to try and do it more. But meditation, okay, not particularly, you know, sitting in a uh, yoga pose. And uh, meditation is essentially quiet time. There's some introspection involved in it, obviously, or some, you know, flushing out of the thoughts depending on how you approach it. But I know just from personal experience that having five or 10 minutes to myself peacefully in the morning, my day will be much better. No, this doesn't cure or treat long-term mental health issues, but it does set me up for a slightly better day. If having a bad time at home, perhaps my wife and I have had an argument or one of my kids is being an arsehole or I'm being an arsehole, Stepping away, taking five minutes, literally. No talking, no thinking. Just, just. I'm probably smoking a cigarette, but sitting outside, smoking, taking five minutes. This has an effect. Just, just literally, calming yourself, and uh, and and <laughs> it's important. And that's one thing I, I want to recommend to everyone, like. I know I've recommended you know physical activity before. Um, I'm, I'm I'm recommending some kind of meditation, maybe at the start of your day, maybe when you get home from work, whatever, however you can fit it in. And it, it doesn't, like I say, have to be sitting in a in a dark you know sensory deprived room. But you need you do need quiet time. You need to be able to focus on on yourself essentially. Whether you need to think of of nothingness or you need to focus on a problem but some so, some kind of quiet mental time makes a difference and that's something that i think the hobby achieves for us in a different way because i know now i as, I, as i've said i hate painting but when i do get an urge and it does happen especially if i get a cool model 
that I really want to get painted. Like, uh, hopefully you can see. One of my contemptors here. I had him prime for a while, but he's been sitting on my desk because I took some pictures to give a size comparison to someone, I believe. And I'm um, sitting on my desk, and every every day I look at it, I was like, okay, I can, you know, I'm starting to visualize how I'm going to get that color scheme. And I know when I do, I'm going to sit here for an hour or two, probably just painting away, not, you know, not thinking about anything, just get my music on, just, just chilling out. And even though I, I don't necessarily, in, I don't enjoy the thought of painting, when I do paint, I, it's, it's chill, you know, it's, it's good, it's good me time. Um, so there's definitely value like mental health value in in recreation in doing things for ourselves that have no fiscal value in our life they don't they don't benefit our pocketbook they don't advance our career you know they don't it's not you know uh supporting someone else whilst that's a very good thing to do we have to look after ourselves we are our best you know caretaker and we should be our best caretaker anyway. Um, and just having that time to yourself, for yourself, is so important. And, you know, I'm sure for most people watching this, hobby work is something we do. You know, whether some people who paint for two or three hours a day every day, some of us like me who maybe get an hour in a month if we're lucky. But however you get your, your hobby time, use it and value it. So... Um, I, I, I want to read a quote here from someone who wrote in. Um, okay, so obviously I'll have the, probably up here, the text on the screen. No, I think it's going to be this side actually. I don't know, one of these. Okay, let's try. how'd you do the quill on right? Yeah, sorry. Okay, so let me read this out. So, I'm writing to you in regards to your mental health topic for the next chill game learn session. I work in the field of community recreation and I consider helping people find purpose through recreation, my life's work. One of the things we try to do as a recreation professional is reduce the barriers to participation however we can. There are a seemingly infinite number of barriers to participation such as skill, difficulty, time, and since we're talking about 40k, we can't ignore that the hobby has a huge financial barrier to participation. All in all, I'd say that to play 40k, there are a number of barriers for someone to climb over to get into the hobby. This is quite a shame because 40k has such an awesome community and is a great way to meet new people, play competitively, and express yourself artistically, all of which are key ingredients to living a purposeful life. The problem is, if there are too many barriers, how can our amazing community do our part to support those in need? I know many people who are interested in the books and lore of 40k, but can't pallet the cost of miniatures, or are daunted by the complexity of the game to play the hobby on the tabletop. Hopefully, as our World Eaters community grows, we have a greater ability to reduce these barriers through various initiatives. So yeah, so I actually messaged um, this person back and kind of chatted a little bit. Well, a couple of messages. And um, absolutely, like the financial burden of this hobby <laughs> can be stressful um, and is a barrier for people it's obviously more for new players or people interested in coming into the hobby but there is also this there's a there's a there's a phrase for this but it's the you know the need for shiny new things isn't it like uh, it's gw's business model like you always you know how at the start of the year new new year new army okay luckily i can resist that but um yeah 40k is a great hobby because it's such within itself a diverse thing because like i said you've got you've got physical things you know building models or building terrain or something you've got painting which as an artistic outlet or you know if you'd like to sketch portraits of characters or, or write homebrew lore or something you've got these these ways to to create something then you know we've got the game which is like a skill based it's a learning experience it's, it's educational it's teaching you critical thinking and, and problem solving and things we can develop ourselves so many ways but we're enjoying it and it's not for anything other than our own enjoyment right and that's important because when the end goal is enjoyment or peace or relaxation 
that's that's what helps our brain. That's what helps increase the right hormones and decrease the wrong hormones. No, it doesn't cure everything. I'm I'm not giving some kind of bullshit five minute youtube ad about how this one thing will solve all your problems because no when we when we get onto some more serious stuff shortly no professional help the first thing i should have caveated this in all cases when if you feel you've got you know some some uh, a, a mental health issue that goes beyond something that you can safely control professional help and I'm, I'm going to talk more about it. But I'm talking about just easing everyday stresses at the moment. You know, you've had a bad day at work. Pick up a paintbrush or put on an audiobook or whatever it is that, you know, floats your boat there. Okay, so I'm going to go on to segue into the next topic here, which is the challenges of modern life. Um, and... This is less related to the hobby, I guess, and more of a general how everything impacts us. Um, so I'm not an anthropologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a historian. Um, I've got interests and, you know, reasonably well read. But again, I'm not a professional in pretty much anything I'm talking about here. It's just a lot of personal thoughts and experiences and feelings, right? But as humans, we're, we're, we're barely evolved creatures. In the, the long history of, of life on this planet, humans have been civilized, for whatever that means, for that in, in, in the history of, of the Earth. I mean, I'm sure we've all seen some cosmos or, you know, read, read our, you know, remember our high school biology or, or whatever, wherever we learned about things like this. But... But we're an animal. We're an upright, bipedal animal with opposable thumbs, you know, uh, intricate language system, communication skills. We use tools, but we're still an animal and we've barely evolved beyond the savannah. Okay? But society and technology, the tools we use, all these things have increased and for the most part, they, have, they are good. Okay? Like, I can't go into the the philosophy of, of all this here. But these are good things. But we are still catching up. You know, we are not necessarily adapted to living the way we live. In, you know, like these such enclosed urban spaces, for instance. Or the diets we maintain. For the most, most of society aren't good. I mean, they're not good for me. I am not advocating to go paleo or anything like that. Um, I just, I, most people, if, if you're an adult, a working adult, you're probably working a 40 hour week or a 50 hour week. And if you're around here, you're probably working a 60 or 70 hour week because, because of where I live. It's just the nature of employment around here. Um, and you know, you, you spend all this time at work laboring however your job is then you come home and, and and you've got a few hours to to enjoy your family your whatever your your home life is and then you've got to sleep and you and you and we're built into this we need eight hours of sleep and we're lucky to get six aren't we really certainly certainly you know for most of us i'm sure and we deal with this and we just keep repeating it and repeating it and society has has told us that this is normal and this is okay and it's not is it now i don't want to get political here but the system we're in is harmful to us it's harmful to people it we are not adapted we are not physically physiologically and psychologically and emotionally equipped to deal with this kind of thing this machine that we're in of perpetual selling ourselves and breaking ourselves to for for what the hope that the tiny hope that we might be able to take a decent vacation every year send our kids to college so they maybe don't have to deal with as much bullshit as us and retire for a few years and you know maybe sit on a beach or something i, 
I don't want to piss on anyone's dreams and I don't want to get political, but this is not good for us. It's not. Um, there's got to be a better way. And I think whilst there's going to be definitely an element of understanding the problems has increased diagnosis uh, with re relation to mental health, um, I think the demands of society and I'm talking, you know, post-industrialization certainly, and probably throughout the history of being um, civilized, a civilized animal. Um, we, I, th I, I think there's a, I, I would, I would bet there's a correlation there, and there's a causal relationship between the situation we've we're in socially, and our mental and the degradation of general mental health um but we can change that i'm not saying we we need to go and live in the forests and and you know hunt with our bare hands good god no i i like video games i, I like playing warhammer i like a comfortable bed you know i just think that's something we need to to bear in mind that um we're 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 at a handicap straight away just just having to deal with with all the bullshit and that's not that's not even touching on all the systemic and institutional things that particularly affect um women and people of color and lgbtq folks and uh, people with disabilities um not even touching on that where everybody is 10 meters behind the start line not everybody people like us who, who who work 40 50 60 hours a week or have a large family to care for or we're we're, we're the ones 10 20 meters behind the start line there's a there's a few people that are there's a, a very small percentage that they're they're one meter behind the finish line to start with but okay not political so um i'm gonna read another quote here um related to this um this one this is I'm, I'm okay i'm just gonna read um but yeah a little bit of content warning here just for some some anguish and you know, some some real shit hey man on the topic of mental health i thought i would share my reasons for liking the world eaters due to a sort of personal reflection when i first got into the 40k universe i saw the world eaters much like everyone else mindless raging murder machines with no other reason to exist other than as the typical bad guys for the imperium to fight same as chaos overall once more books and law once more books and law started becoming available i realized that on the surface there is the basic good versus evil in chaos versus the imperium but it goes much deeper than that at this time i was in the military and coincidentally i was a huge fan of the loyalist space marines as time went on, my views and opinions of the world and what I was doing began to change. I didn't see us as the heroes the world needed to make it a better place. I saw us as a rich man's ha I saw us as a rich man's hammer to ensure dissidents were put in their place so the rich could get richer. Then I went back to the 40k law and noticed the legions and primarchs that turned to chaos were often the ones with more complex backgrounds and an inner conflict they struggled with in finding their place in the Imperium and its goals they didn't agree with what the emperor was doing and turned to chaos as a form of liberation to pursue their own goals i began to self-reflect and noticed i felt the same way about myself and my and my involvement in the military i didn't agree with what we were doing and felt we were treated as objects rather than people anyone who stood up was removed so i decided i had enough and got out of the military a couple years later i was diagnosed with mild ptsd and depression I think I always knew I suffered from depression, I just didn't know what it was and that it wasn't normal. I was at war with myself inside and any given day was a battle. I was angry for no reason, lost motivation and all faith in our society was gone. I once again turned to 40k and by this time the Horus Heresy series was in full swing. The traitor, <coughs> excuse me. The traitor legions were fleshed out and I went all in. I knew the general gist of Angron's story, but going back and really delving into the World Eaters, I felt like I was reading about myself. Angron's battle with the nails buzzing at the back of his head, depression, his rejection of the Emperor and his vision, my military experience, 
his anger at being seen as an object to be used rather than a person and his absolute belief that all he should be that all should be free to do as they pleased his pride in himself as a warrior and his desire for honor if he didn't have the nails he could have been so much more and the tragedy and self-destruction are very real problems people face in battling mental health like i said every day is a battle and i never know which me is going to win do i want to be angry no do i want to believe there is good out there yes but i just can't see it anyway that's my story sorry for the rant and i appreciate your awareness and tolerance of these kinds of problems it's way more common than most realize and if someone isn't friendly or open then who's know what kind then who knows what kind of battles they're dealing with so that one you know i've had i've read it a few times sorry for stumbling a little bit there um that's pretty cutting right someone um served in the military um probably I, I don't know but probably you know out of high school or shortly afterwards you know wanted to be a patriot serve the country you know be an honorable person um i realized they were getting fucked which is, which is pretty much true um i, I again I, I i don't want to get into politics but you know like the uh the song oh my god um fortunate son by um oh but I, okay i'm not gonna pause and worry about that so yeah um young men especially but unfortunately you know this is one area where um it seems to be that you know oh we'll we'll treat women totally equally here and if we can get bodies for the meat grinder um look i I, I don't want to get political here. Um, I recognise the need for a military. Um, I just think the way militaries are run in the world and uh, used is pretty fucking terrible. Um, I, I, I don't want to go into that. Um, it's too, there's too much to dig into there. Um, but just from the person who sent this in, um, that, you know, that, that was cutting... Um, that was that was hard to read um and to 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 think about and yes like ptsd and depression and you know just all the fucking awful things that happen to our service members um because they're essentially tricked and lied to that you know they're they're people like i i i've never been in the military i almost joined when i was younger and i decided against it and I'm glad I did. Um, no disrespect to individual service members or veterans, um, but I just find the way that you are used for almost in anything that you are used for is generally abhorrent. Um, and that's not against you as people. That's against the system, which is fucking you over. Um but you deal and you will deal with some terrible things and I feel for you and um, it's terrible um, and it's a huge contributing factor to mental health issues, right? Just, I, I understand our military, our armed forces are smaller in number than they were 100 years ago, 200 years ago, um, but so much more brutal okay you may, you may not be performing uh, many bayonet charges or anything but the the magnitude of violence um and the personal level of violence and in some cases being forced to be completely impersonal as you're some you know some uh, people were you know, drone pilots or drone pilots or something and uh almost from what i understand uh taught to treat it like a video game bombing a village is a video game and that's gonna fuck with you that's gonna fuck you up and uh that's bad um okay let me let me step step on here so something else that um is affecting us in modern life um covid right F for i i live in the united states and uh 
you know my, my family most of my family um still lives in the uk so i'm in pretty constant contact with them and in these two countries at least and i'm sure many others we, we we've pretty much fucked up um how we're dealing with this right um hopefully not anyone watching this but our entitled societies of uh you know freedom things like that sorry for the squeaky chair um and i i for a year now i've been pretty much trapped inside i, I go to work every day well almost every day um and i come home um i have recently started uh playing 40k again every other week uh with buddy from work because we're in a bubble um other than that see my in-laws occasionally they just came around today excuse me but it's been hard i'm not a really social person anyway but i like going to like rtts and hanging out with friends i used to go to the gym a lot and just just all these little things right and covid come along and, and took it away um because I treated it seriously, or I am treating it seriously. Um, I'm lucky enough that I, I can, I'll be eligible for a vaccine soon. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm going to suddenly go, you know, walking around coughing in people's faces and, you know, licking the ground. I mean, just because I'm vaccinated, I, d I don't know the, you know, it's. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop what I consider good practices, using a mask when I'm out, washing my hands like crazy, like, you probably can't know, the light's not good, uh, but my skin on my hands is, is fucking awful right now, just because of the amount of alcohol, uh, you know, uh, the hand cleaner, hand sanitizer, use alcohol-based hand sanitizer at work, just the amount of times I scrub it and scrub them, oh, ugh. but this shit affects us, right? this the 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 being outside of our normal social engagement outside of our normal communities whatever we're into you know obviously we're all into a bit of 40k right but i'm sure we've all got other things where we, you know we play sports or we we love to go to the see the movies or to, to the theater or going to fucking concerts right i can't imagine what it i can't remember what it was like to be crammed in a you know, in a, in a in a in a venue with like two hundred or three hundred or a thousand people, are just crammed up. You know, trying you make room for the mosh pit. Like, what, what was that like? I don't remember. Um, yeah, life has changed, and we're, we're 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 trying to adapt to it. But again, this is this is not something we're used to. Like, just not going outside so much, not getting as much sunlight, and we've just dealt with a. Well, we're dealing with the end of a shitty winter here. And like these things, these affect us. Like our just our exposure to sunlight affects us. Like you know, these are these are real things, and trying to cope with them, and not being around people. Even for someone like me, who I'm not really a social person, I, it takes a lot for me to really like talk to someone, like talk, talk, not just hey, how you doing like a lot like there's probably maybe three or four people here in in this country that i could talk to and i'm not talking about like deep stuff i'm talking about having a fucking conversation like what i'm kind of doing here because i don't have to worry about in this are you mocking me are you a, a, am i sounding like an idiot um just these the little neuroses or whatever that that go through my head like am i wasting your time I'm sorry, you know, I know I, I shouldn't talk, it's boring. This is this is helpful for me <laughs> because I'm not worrying about that right now. I'm, I'm fairly sure anyone who feels those things will have turned off, so it doesn't matter. Anyone who's watching it is at least partially interested in what I've got to say, and that's really helpful for me um, because I don't like talking to people. Um, like IRL, you know, um... I, yeah um and we all just because that's a thing just because i don't i'm not a very sociable person or a very you know extroverted person i, I still miss going out um I, I miss the small talk 
and I fucking hate small talk, but I'm, I'm talking about like, um, just I, I don't know. I, there's not really many examples I want to sort of share in, in public, but I, I, I go into the gym. Like, I, I, it's been, you know, I've been once in the last year, I think, and that was a fucking disaster, but it was recently. But just going and, you know, seeing the locals there. Um, I'd, 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 I'd say the bar, but I'm not really much of a drinker anymore, so I'd, I don't have that. But, um, you know, seeing the people that every morning I would, hey, how are you doing? How, you know, how, how's your partner? How's, how's the kids? You know, you know, oh, how's the job going? Just, just that shit, right? Just bullshitting with someone for five minutes, talking about the weather. Well, yeah, it's a very British thing, but just these little things. And they've been taken away, and and I miss them, and that's fucking ridiculous, right? And and I imagine anyone who's watching this, listening to this, if you think about it, the things you've lost over the last year, hopefully you're getting them back now. But think about the little things, and how weird it's going to be to to relearn some things, right? Um, so th- this is kind of a a, a little uh, another little quote here, um. It's kind of related um, to this. So let, let, let me read. Um, it's, it's on a more positive note. though. Over the last year, I've had more than a few customers share how hobbying has helped them through this rough time. I have a mild degree of survivor's guilt as my business has thrived, while so many others were hit with insurmountable circumstances. But hearing that we help people literally stay alive relieves that feeling a bit. On On a lighter anecdote side... We have bits therapy at work. When things are stressful or the day has been rough in general, we dig around in the bits bin. It's super calming. In fact, it's exactly like occupational therapy with sensory bins to soothe overstimulation and increase focus. That's, you know, that's that's great. That's, um, that it, it's good that someone... Can, I, I understand there's survivor's guilt in there, um, but I don't think this person needs to to, to be concerned with that. Um, if if you've managed to keep a, a, a you know a hobby related business afloat in this time, that's great. Um, that's that's good. It's been a challenging time, and I know people. I know a few small business owners, um, and obviously the person who sent uh, to, to shared this with me. Um, a lot of people have suffered and if you've managed to to pivot around that then that's good and um that you found ways to to deal with some things bits therapy i mean i've never thought of that and i imagine it's you know if you run in a business that's that's a real thing i like just sorting out bits for me i kind of enjoy it because i like organized things um you know my I'll, I'll, I'll maybe i'll do a video on that but i've got one of those uh like uh Things I used to use for like uh, nails and screws and you know different uh, hardware. Um, I just threw all that shit in a in a bin in a in a tote because oh, like a Tupperware pot. And now I use I've got like left left Chaos Space Marine arms in one, torsos in another, right Chaos Space Marine arms, chainsaws. You know every little bit has a has a draw. Um, but that that's good. It's good to hear some positive stuff. Um, and yes, they, it just go, kind of goes to show that the hobby can help people, right? It like in a very real way. Um, obviously, I don't know any more information than what was shared there, um, but I, I can absolutely believe that. So, <sighs> all right. Um, my next topic's a, a pretty big one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually pause this video and have a little think on this one. But I'll, I'll be back in no time at all for you but in a little while for me okay i'm back um got me a coffee now it's 1 a.m here five after one and i'm drinking coffee um in case my uh, workmate is watching fuck you um <clears throat> i'm currently working third shift at the moment which is a bit of a fucking nightmare anyway so the next subject uh, I want to talk about here is toxic masculinity, which I briefly touched on in the intro. So first off, what is it? 
Well, what's masculinity? Um, let's give the most basic reductionist point, you know, definition, I guess. Um, I'm not even Googling it here. It's just mostly stream of consciousness. Stream of consciousness. So masculinity is things we would associate with being masculine, right? Whether that's being strong or being protective or... <clears throat> Uh, maybe even like things like a work ethic can be worked into there or things like, you know our appearance you know whether it's facial hair or you know uh, being big and strong um, this is what we typically think of masculinity and that's you know generally accurate <clears throat> but um, think about I watched a video recently um uh, talking about Aragorn from the Lord of the Rings, it was a you know particularly the movie version, um, and how Aragorn is right. He is a badass, you know. He is courageous as fuck, charging into whatever you know the enemy, uh, Sauron or Saruman is throwing at them. Skilled warrior, but he's also a poet. You know, he uh, he sings. His wedding, or is it his coronation? I can't remember exactly. He's he's not afraid of of being himself, right? He's not constrained by this ex expectation that he should be a true warrior and stoic and stone faced and you know proud and noble, which he is, but without these other aspects of himself. Uh, there was a particular scene they discussed in the video where um when Boromir dies right and you know he kisses in the film Aragorn kisses Boromir on the forehead as he you know when he finally passes away like sort of like male touch right it's not something I, I'm not a very touchy-feely person myself with, with anyone um but there's these expectations that it's you know Mean, means we're gay apparently and as if <clears throat> like first off there's that connotation that that's bad right which it isn't but it's implied in if two straight men hug then you know or I, I hold hands or something I, I don't know it's just the implication that it's bad and that's toxic I'm not saying we should you know absolutely go around especially right now hugging and holding hands um, with COVID, don't do it, okay? Unless there's someone in your in your bubble or in your family. But um, that it's frowned upon. Um, you know, if you are like me and you, you, you value your personal space and you're not, not big on touching and hugging and stuff, which I'm just not, <clears throat> then that's one thing. That, that's a different issue. Um, or a different thing. And it's fine to be like that. You know, we need to be safe and secure with our own our own bodies, right? But if you are, you know, why is it seen as a bad thing? <clears throat> but let's dig a bit deeper than that. You know, what with toxic masculinity, right? The, the, the biggest problem, in my opinion, or certainly one of the biggest problems with it, is this thing about talking about our problems, admitting our problems, talking to someone about real stuff is weakness is you know something women do or is a feminine thing or whatever <clears throat> i don't think it is at all um gender expectations aside which is you know a much bigger subject than i'm in remotely qualified or knowledgeable to talk about <clears throat> but talking about feelings is not it cannot be a masculine or feminine, a male female thing. It's not a you know, it's not binary at all. Um, it's it's a human thing. It's how we deal with a lot of things, like these mini stresses, these micro stresses that I kind of alluded to early on in the video. The 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 general shit we deal with on a day to day, the stuff that fills up our emotional attic in our brain, in our in our in our mind this you know come home i should be able to feel comfortable talking to my wife for instance 
about stuff and I don't and it's nothing to do with her it's it's me like I, I should point this out I'm not coming at anyone watching this video as though I'm some paragon of um, that I've achieved some kind of actualization here no I'm I struggle with everything that anyone who's watching this or I struggle with a lot of the same things that you struggle with absolutely I'm just trying to do better and trying to talk about things and this is a good way for me this is an avenue for me because you're there right I'm here you're there we don't have to it's easier for me to talk to you as someone I can't see um and this is a step for me opening up about stuff I, I have talked uh, online <clears throat> forums and chat rooms and stuff but that's even less personal this is another step for me um but you know and it's again it's not like when i want to talk to my wife my wife has no problem unloading and you know she goes through a lot she's got a real stressful job you know just just being an adult right now is tough um and she can deal with that partially you know and I, you know i try to be a good listener and <clears throat> advise if she asked for it or comment if she asked for it or just you know respond well that sucks babe or, or whatever it is um and allow her to vent and sometimes i do but not enough um you know sometimes i'll chat with my workmate and we you know we both get stuff off our chest we i think we've got a pretty good relationship good friendship like that but that's not all the time sometimes there's things i just keep bottled up and i think we all do and that's that's toxic to me as, as a masculine man um because that's how i identify um that's that's bad for me and it's bad for you if you do it um and and you know if, if you're a woman or non-binary or, or however you identify it's bad for you okay don't do it please don't do it if you do do it be try and work on it find a way to work on it right um but it you know it builds up um and if you are affected by this if, if you have this kind of niggling back of your mind expectation this this thing that's like, i can't talk about my problems i can't talk no one wants to hear that not no one cares that i had a bad day at work that's not a real problem you know it, it is and that's why we you know one of the things one of the reasons we have you know partners husbands wives or, or whatever we have or friends one of the things that's part of that kind of intimate relationship or just a friendship you know you, you know your mates that you see at the pub or whatever being able to talk about shit and we, we need to normalize that um we need i need to do better about that and when i do you know tell like my wife for instance <clears throat> about some shit that's you know just getting me down and it's small shit you know it's like frustrations at work or whatever she doesn't judge me has no problem she'll listen and if i ask what she thinks she'll tell me or she'll you know nod her head and oh that sucks babe and you know but i i still have my own limitations that i need to push through and trust her more because she's trustworthy and um I, I owe her more than that more of me right and it's only going to do me good and it's only going to do you good um and sort of tying into that is um crying right and being emotionally honest um so last night um actually about this time last night i was having a bit of a hard time um i was just trying to de-stress a little bit watching some youtube videos been working on a script for another video that i'm you know for this week and i needed a break so i was watching some youtube videos and uh seen a uh, live performance on youtube by a band i really like a band called architects hopefully some of your fans because they're a really cool band well a few years ago uh, one of their members died of um, skin cancer um and his brother is also in the band and you know surviving brother is still in the band and um, they, they were doing a concert in uh, Reading in the UK, big festival. I think this was 2017 or 2016. And um, the 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 singer um, Sam gave this like really emotional speech, right? Um, talking because they'd literally just lost 
um, had just lost him, and or you know uh, that year, I believe. Um, and he gives this really emotional speech, and then they go into this this one song of theirs. Uh, they, they're a kind of like they're, they're a prog metalcore band, I guess you'd call them. Well, it's the easiest way to describe them. Um, a song called "Gone with the Wind," which is really like a pretty emotional song. Yeah, it's got like this kind of screamy vocals, but it's got some real sort of like kind of beautiful, clean vocals as well. Um, and just just like just watching this live performance and like this this guy like he's tearing up as he's singing and as he's talking to this like huge crowd, and I, you know, I I, I had to stop it halfway through, and you know, I f- felt myself like oh my god, because um you know a few years ago my brother got cancer. Um, he survived. He's he's you know in remission. He's okay, but he lives in the UK and I live here in the US. And I couldn't go and see him, right? And I I couldn't see him. I couldn't go over there. And you know he was going through all this stuff. And um, like yeah, my parents were over there and his wife and. <sighs> But just watching this video and, and and seeing this guy talk about you know talk from his heart and, and stuff, it really hit me. And you know, I sat there and I basically had a cry last night, right? Um, and you know, after that, I, I kind of I you know got myself together a bit and um, just however the algorithms work. This uh, this video, the comedy video, come up, um, which actually my brother introduced me to this uh, comedian called Limmy. He's a Scottish comedian. I, he, I think he basically does like Twitch streams, but uploads like his clips. I don't really know much about him. I watched a couple of his clips and fucking hilarious. Well, this he puts this this video popped up. It's something it about how he would talk to God when he died. I was, oh fuck it, I need something right. I need something at the moment. <clears throat> so I put it on and and I cried again through fucking hil- hilarity. Oh my god, this it, it it was a bit of a roller coaster last night, okay? But um <clears throat> just just saying that, like um presumably you probably just noticed a bit of a cut um about a minute ago cuz you know, it, it that's hard and I I just saying, just admitting that I cried. How the memories and the the things affected me, you know, that was that was hard for me to say on here. And no one watching this knows. There might be a couple of people who kind of know me, who I've chatted to, or you know, like my workmate knows. But I'm I haven't got a problem with with that. <clears throat> but um, it felt hard to say that, and that's that's a bit ridiculous, right? That a very natural and completely understandable emotional expression, crying, a way that we, for whatever reason, we adapted to to, to cry when we're sad or upset. <clears throat> what? Why is that wrong? Why should I feel bad about that? And yet I do, or or not bad. I feel like I should hide it. That I should numb it down. That I should try not to cry when I'm sad. I should try not to express my fucking emotions and suppress them and and let them build up inside me and become fucking anger and rage and, and all this shit, right? No, no, I shouldn't. Um Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read another quote here. Um Because is this um the impression I get, um, this is someone a bit younger. Um, but I, I, I kind of identify with it um, from 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 my younger days, right? And I think you'll you'll see what I'm saying. So let me read this. <clears throat> um, I've mained world eaters for over a decade now, but it wasn't until about five years ago I realised why I collect them. Outside of the fact I'm a lover of violence and martial prowess, mostly due to my dad raising me on stories of knights, barbarians and the like. I realised it was because of my anger, it was because of my anger, I've always been an angry individual. But most people don't understand the true nature of it. Sure, it can be explosive and loud and aggressive, but it can also be more insidious than that. 
It can be smouldering, turning you bitter with a low heat if not careful. My epiphany was that the world eaters dealt with what I dealt with constantly, a gnawing, burning need to be enraged and cause violence. So the hobby has really helped me express that side of my mental health in a healthier way, rather than the usual method people express it. The usual method people express, you know, their anger. And I do vent my rage and tamed bloodlust in other hobbies like armoured combat and video games. But it was 40k that helped me truly realise my nature and begin the process on how to live with it in a way where I wouldn't hate it or cause me to go down a terrible path with its power. I hope this is a good sort of the stream story for the stream on how one may not necessarily conquer their mental health issues but learn to live and even possibly tame them to feel enjoyment from them. So let me comment a bit on that. I understand. Um, I think I think perhaps um, we need to address that anger as individuals more than that. Not tame it, um, but I understand the perspective here. The um, because yes, anger is a real thing, right? And it it can be something that drives us. Uh, I've t talked about this on a video recently. Actually, it can be something that drives us and. Uh, motivates us and we can use anger positively you know especially especially in fights against um like injustice right it's righteous to be angry at injustice as an example um and we can use it to drive change and change hearts and minds and policy and and, and, and to, to improve things for other people right anger isn't in itself a, a, a bad thing it's just an emotion. It's a way that we can release negative things inside us, right? Um, and can be useful. Um, th there are situations where sometimes you need you need to be angry, and you need to be fucking furious at something or someone. Um, but as a constant. If, if anger is a constant problem, which is something I deal and have dealt with, um, and I think is a very common thing with men, um, you know, to, remarked earlier on uh, someone having PTSD, uh, and then this individual here, you know, dealing with anger. Um, and this is something that society... That, 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 that is toxic masculinity that, that is not helped by us suppressing our emotions by not crying by not talking about problems with our friends or loved ones or with professionals um, of pretending to be strong when we feel weak when, even being able to admit we're weak to ourselves in our head silently that you know I'm, I, I don't want to say that takes real courage or whatever it does, but that that's just like a it's like a platitude or something. I, I'm not sure of the right word there. Um, we need we we dealing with anger. We we have to find ways to cope with it. And if it's something that's chronic and constant and consistent, we 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 may need um, to look into you know talking to professionals about that. Um, but I'm going to discuss that a little bit more in a little while. Um, I recognise that this has been going on for a while now, but I've still got a bit to talk about, so I'm sorry. Um, should should didn't realise it would take this long. Um, so, sort of rolling back a little bit there, the, the, the expectation as a man to, to be strong, to, to be noble, or just the, these things... You know, to, to not complain. And I, when I say complain, I, I mean, you know, to be okay with our lot in life, right? I don't mean, you know, just just the little complaints and like the whininess. I don't mean that. To not be okay with our circumstances. We're supposed to just accept, you know. Fortunately, it has changed somewhat. But there's still this prevailing undercurrent of the, the man is expected to work. And you know, bear in mind where I live, it's a very Republican right wing part of a of a swing state, um, rural area. 
um, in the United States. Very, you know, still very much the case of the man goes to work, the woman stays at home, raises the kids and cooks and cleans, right? Um, it's not how our house functions. We have a pretty fair division of labor. Um, neither of us do the things we like to do, or neither of us do the things we don't like to do. And it just so happened that it kind of worked out perfect, pretty much. Um, no one likes taking the trash out. So we kind of automate that one, but um, that yeah, these these there there is still this expectation, right, that the man will work, and uh, the man has to be strong. The man has to pay the bills and do the man things, right? And that's not necessary. Um, I hope to think that for for those in relationships, um, whether straight relationships, gay relationships, polyamorous relationships, what what whatever you're in, right? Um, that each member of that relationship is comfortable in their role and you know that could be you may have a legit relationship where he, you, as, a, as a man you, you want to go out and work and the woman wants to stay and raise, raise kids that is not in itself a bad thing it's doing it because it's the expectation right and not being something that is mutually agreed upon um and both people, both or all people in a relationship are, ha are happy with. If everyone's happy, genuinely happy with their, their role, then fucking good, good for you. Love it. Um, but if you're not, you know, again, if, if you're a man and you, you're in this role, why are you trapped in this? Why, why, why are you not, ex why are you, why is the expectation not on you to be the stay at home dad and allow, you know, your wife or your girlfriend or your partner, <coughs> excuse me, to go out and, and be the breadwinner, right? Why is it that way round? Because you know, if you, if you're in a um, in a straight relationship, because the woman gave birth. Outside of some very, uh, you know, of that the, the initial uh, attachment phase, I guess I'm not sure what the, if there's a technical term. It's it's a social expectation, right? Um. Now, obviously, in an ideal world, both parents would be home for a very long time raising kids, and society would, would support that. I would love that, that to be the case. I would love every child to be raised by their parents for as long as necessary, to give them a good relationship, to, to get the right attachments and psychological bonds and emotional bonds. We don't live there. That's, that's not where we live, right? So dealing with what we have, challenge it. If 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 you want to be a stay at home dad, or whatever, go you know discuss that. I, I know that was a very uh, narrow view there, but um, just trying to put some context in uh, because it's just an application. It's a practical application of what is expected of men, right? And this is. This is a patriarchal society's expectations. And touching back on some of those things I talked about in the in the intro, right? Um, whether it's the, the this kind of expectation of the man is the breadwinner, especially if you're in an area like me. This may not be something that you have to deal with, um, but it is something in the real, in parts of the world, right? I literally live in a fucking place. Um, or, you know, the... <sighs> I don't know the raw data behind this. It's been a few years since I read anything about it, and I, I don't want to give the wrong impression of any bias here. But I seem to remember there is um, an imbalance, an injustice, I guess, in um, like child custody. Um, whilst I understand the history behind it, I, I well, I know for a fact from experience um, that child custody is a fucking joke, legally speaking, in the United States, right? It's it's not there. There's nowhere near enough um, input, research, uh, understanding done by the court system, and money buys children um, in a lot of cases. But in cases where you can't afford, you know, the better lawyer, um, then it, it, it's certainly conceivable. But I can't claim it as a fact. But it's certainly conceivable that. <clears throat> society the legal system sways towards the woman uh, to the mother um because of 
she gave birth. Now, I, you know, this, this is obviously an incredibly in-depth subject, and I'm not going to go much more into it. But if there is a disparity there, if there is an injustice, that is because of the society framing the mother as the the primary child bear, child raiser, right, or a primary parent or something, when it's not necessarily the case. We don't. People in general are equally prone to be shit or good at anything, right? Your gender, your your, uh, your skin color, your nationality, none of that drives your, the quality of you as a person. That's that's something that the injustices of society that you deal with are affected by those criteria, but. Your, the quality of you as a parent, for instance, is not indicative um, of any of those things. Um, <clears throat> but society tells us that women uh, should should be the default, right? And a better legal system and a more just legal system would address that. But the patriarchal society that we live in doesn't give a fuck about that. And that's one of the ways it hurts men, right? thinks you need to suck it up and be strong what so do we wonder why there's fucking high suicide rates amongst men especially amongst young men and even more so amongst veterans who tend to be more you know more men are veterans than women just because of how it goes it's not women's fault um it's society's fault it's the society that has put you me as men in this role and we're not allowed to cry and we're not allowed to talk about things and going to a psycho a psychiatrist or a therapist or a counselor is weak um and, and and it's not masculine it's not manly so it's not a fucking surprise is it when we we, we kill ourselves more often um so all right let, i've got another I have a quote lined up here. Um, so again, let's uh, let's make it. Let's do some positive stuff here. Um, reasonably, relatively positive. I know several people who find hobby stuff, e.g., painting, particularly useful as a distraction to keep their hands busy when they're trying to resist intrusive thoughts about self harm. Um, absolutely. Um, I. I <laughs> I can't speak to that particular thing in itself. I'm absolutely 100% believable. Um, it's something I'm aware of. Um, Self-harming um, on a personal level. Um, not with myself, but it's something I am aware of. Um, and I can see that something that can tether you, bring you back, um, lock you in to to another place for a moment, to just draw your mind away from that, that horrible drive, that whatever it is that, that makes people want to hurt themselves, right? If it distracts you from that for a moment and lets you think about something else and takes you away from that, yes. Um, so if, if I, I don't know if you're watching this, listening, and uh, you, you're dealing with self-harm for yourself or for a loved one, um, well, first of all, I hope you're, you know, engaged in some professional support, right? Um, that's priority. Um, your, your, your health and safety or that of your loved one or someone you know is, is number one here. And uh, please... Please reach out to you know professional. Your GP can refer you. Uh, your family doctor, whatever you call it, where where you are, um, can can easily and readily refer you to someone. And um, I, want, I, I want you to to um, to to do that, okay? Um, but if it's something that you are dealing with, right? Something you are you, you're seeking help. You're talking to someone. You're doing the right thing. Is right. You're doing everything you can. And if it, maybe you just like playing, you know, like Dawn of War or something, you, you're in the hobby because of something else. You like reading the books. Maybe try the hobby. Maybe try um, painting or modeling or sorting out bits or something. And just and just have something like that around you, right? So if, if something creeps into your mind and, and whatever triggers you into feeling that way, 
okay, I'm going to paint this orc. I'm going to paint this harlequin. It's something, right? Um, I can't see it being a bad thing. I can't see it hurting. I ho hopefully it can act as a distraction for you. Um, I would definitely, absolutely 100% suggest you um, talk about this with a professional first um, to make sure they recommend it. I'm, I'm, it sounds re perfectly reasonable to me, but I'm absolutely in no way qualified to advise you on anything like this. Um, <clears throat> if, for instance, you are in a place right now um, where you can't reach out to a professional, whether you're 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 barred out financially or access-wise because of COVID or whatever, uh, and you can't reach out to <clears throat> a professional, and you don't have a loved one, and you, and you don't have anyone, um, you, I, I'll talk to you. Um, I'll talk to you. I like. I will. Um, you can you can email me or message me or whatever. Um, I, I I'll listen or whatever you need. Um, but I I I want you to um, find to get help if 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 you're hurting yourself or you know someone that's hurting themselves, right? Okay, so we're gonna move on now um, and actually kind of look at the law a bit and uh, talk about talk about the world eaters. Um, gone on for a little while now. Um, fuck it, right? So. I did talk about this briefly in a uh, in another video I did last week, couple of weeks ago. Um, but I it was I wanted to pull the thread a bit here and um, expand on it a bit, right? So the world eaters, but Angron in particular, right? So Angron as a as a fictional character, as a figurehead, as a primarch, as a demigod, whatever, he's created for one purpose, okay? And bear in mind, I'm, I'm leading this around. This this isn't just some cheap like parallel here. Um, I, I I find it genuinely helpful, right? Angron, as as a being, as a man, um, was created to to do good, uh, you know, within the confines of the Imperium, um, within that internal moral code ethical code whatever it was created to do something good created to further the uh dominance of of humanity um that's one of the ironies of 40k right um but within that his you know i've talked about this before his his latent psychic power or ability as, as shown in a uh, slave of nuceria um he heals other people right L like literally heals them um there's a scene uh where him and many of the other slaves are like uh i think it's just after a, a battle um uh, a gladiatorial battle and you know they got their asses handed to them or something and um like they they basically sleep in a circle like holding hands angron you know the giant primarch and all these you know humans Holding, holding hands or, you know, touching each other in, 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 like, a circle. And he absorbs all their pain, like, their literal pain and injury and, you know, sickness, whatever it is. It takes it, like, takes it from them and puts it in himself. So he's, he's a healer, right? He's He should have been one of the, the good Primarchs, like Vulcan, for instance. Like, um, I, and I say good in, um, I mean, it... You know, because obviously, you know, your Gilliman and your Lion are the good guys, whatever. Um, but I mean, like, the genuinely good. Someone who heals or protects the weak. These are genuinely good things. Like, being a bureaucrat... Like, I love Gilliman. I'm not going to bash on the Ultramarines. But being a skilled bureaucrat is, is kind of neutral, right? You'll be equally as useful in an evil empire as a good one as ironic as a good empire would be um and you know being a prolific warrior or swordsman or whatever the, these are good things but they're they're their use is ambivalent to morality but healing people um like taking pain from people 
it's very hard to 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 put that in a negative light. I, it's possible, of course. You you can stretch anything between virtue and vice, you know. But it's it's very difficult. You've you've got to go a long way. And like Vulcan, as a as a you know a canonical example, is you know him and uh, you know the salamanders themselves are very devoted to you know, protecting the weak. Yes, it's within the confines of you know a xenophobic, you know theocratic fascist imperium, but within that they're at least you know humanitarian and humane. Um, and Angron, it was was forged in a similar way. It appears. Um, but it wasn't to be because he was at that point obviously a slave. Um, he was captured after his uh, growing vat or whatever was was found on um, on on Nuceria, uh by was it Harlequins or Eldar who tried to kill him and he beat the shit out of them all. Um, but then he was enslaved. Like oh, it's just so it doesn't make sense law wise. But whatever they you know have to drive the narrative. He's captured. And they they can easily drug him um, and you know put him out, but put him to sleep. So you know over the story, obviously he's physically enslaved. He's forced to kill people. Or for, there's a good progression because first he's forced to survive at the cost of other people. He doesn't kill anyone in his first challenge, but he either survives or he dies. There's it can only be one survivor in the first contest, and then increasingly each battle, each each bout, each gladiatorial, you know combat he's he's required to do more and more you know like inhuman things like actively killing you know just generic enemies then actively fighting against his comrades then like ultimately he's asked to kill his 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 father figure his mentor um on Emmaus and he refuses so he's then um tortured and you know uh surgeries performed he's given the butcher's nails and that's that's the moment where angron becomes that's it his his direction his path his fate is changed um he there is no no way back like we we learn from the law at least that we know of that it was essentially impossible to remove the nails without killing him um i think you know obviously in hindsight they probably should have tried um, but they didn't. The Emperor, Malkador, Arkenland, um, uh, Valkyridar, um, and anyone else who was involved couldn't do it. So he, you know, he becomes Angron. Eventually Demon Prince Angron. Um, Demon Primarch Angron. But think about that. So, so someone who was born, you know, as a child, as an infant, as a child... Yes, he's he's strong because he can fight off, you know, Eldar or Harlequins um, and defend himself. But he's not evil. He's not bad. He's he's surviving. He's he's a, you know, a formless or he's formed as a, you know, he's built to be a killer, right? Or, or a warrior, let's say. And we know that like in, you know, with all the aspects of the emperor, he's like the 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 rage, the anger excuse me but there's a there's there's a nobility to him before the nails and you know he he he's a fucking revolutionary um he's trodden on and you know enslaved and um you know there's some strong parallels it's more you know the spartacus thing i i don't want to refer to other historical slavery here because that would be um, pretty tasteless i think but from the, you know like the greco-roman kind of histories of you know gladiatorial slaves and stuff um so he's he, he's a good person he fights for his brothers and sisters his you know his comrades and he he doesn't like seeing them get hurt and he literally absorbs their pain because that's his one of the, one of the few things he can do for them is absorb their pain and take their pain but eventually he he you know they, they they break out they break free and he's got the nails obviously at this point but he hasn't fully succumbed it's inevitable but he hasn't succumbed and um all these events keep pushing him and pushing him and he still fights against it he still fights to be to be good to be properly masculine i guess protecting people 
that that can't protect themselves as well as he can, right? Weaker people. You know, you know, he's a Primarch, so everyone was fucking weak to him. But there's nothing wrong with it. If you're, you know, as a strong, strong man or a strong person, if you can protect people that need protecting, you should do it, right? Um, the, the, the it's, it's a very, it's not a, a black and white answer there. But um, if you're an ally to people, um, you know, in, let's say in a demonstration, right? Um, if you if you're allied to people, uh, you know, especially as a white man, think about where you can position yourself to to use the strength and the privilege that you have, right? Um, and how that can be used for for good, essentially, and what you shouldn't be doing as as a man in in you know expressing. Uh, wanton violence and things like that and this is how Angron's trying to act he's trying to protect his you know his, his fellows his his you know fellow slaves and using what he can of himself to to keep them alive and to free them to give them liberty ultimately um and the slavery first of his body and then of his event eventually of his mind and how it and how it warps him it is society, right? Um, it's, it's a. I, I mentioned in the upper video where I discussed it. Um, it's obvious. Um, it wasn't intended to be like that. I'm almost sure. I'm actually doing a, some pretty ridiculous research for the uh, inevitable old hammer video, which I've been working on for several months now. Um, actually, quite kind of proud of the production value of it at this point. Um, but I've been like doing some inc really in-depth research into the history of the world. It is like literally researching to find the very first mention, you know, in the law, right? And um, Angron doesn't really crop up until a bit later on. Like, the Primarchs don't really exist for a while. Um, they do and they don't. They don't exist as Primarchs. They're like generals at first. Um, but anyway, so I don't think this was intended for Angron. But the way it's developed in the Horus Heresy and, you know, in your Betrayer and your short stories in the Siege of Terror stuff in the, the, uh, Slave of Nuceria Primarchs book, um, this, this backstory to Angron, I think it's very much intended, even if not outright said that, you know, the High Riders, they are the government, they are the rich, the powerful, the 1%, the people at the top, um, they they have fucking gladiator games right there's the just a parallel to roman debauchery at its finest in that society the high riders are the aristocracy right they're the the rich the powerful the one percent all of that um and he is just downtrodden even you know even as a powerful man as a strong man as a masculine man society tells him his body is theirs so we can draw a parallel to how you know his 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 physical slavery can be you know loosely compared to how people not just men but everyone is is given their role to fill the, the shoes you have to walk in to be a valuable member of society and then the the nails are a mechanism to turn him into what they need nothing but violence the expectation that anger is the only emotion that matters anymore and your worth is only measured in how your anger is displayed, right? And sometimes it feels like that <clears throat> um, as a man, right? Sometimes it does feel like that. Um, that our strength or our anger or our whatever is the only thing that matters, Um and that's not good for us. And it obviously wasn't, you know, good for Angron because it led him directly to, uh, you know, first heresy and, you know, treachery and then to demonhood, which, you know, like, like arguments about the, the Empire being bad, the Imperium being bad and chaos, you know, being like good aside within the internal narrative from a from the because we're, we're we're automatically given the imperium's point of view right that's who we associate with at first at least because 
as humans we're going to identify with humans yes we may gravitate towards xenos or chaos whatever and identify more with their values perhaps um but we, we're pushed and probably internally required to identify with the imperium at first and he's he's angon's led away from that led away from what we consider to be righteous and you know what is possible if the heresy hadn't happened if fucking erebus had left it all alone that the imperium may have actually progressed imagine if oh, it's just fucking colonial thinking isn't it and i should have stopped myself before i even said that but for honesty i'll leave it in um because no that's I can't justify that, like the colonization of of the stars. Now, you know, had, it is possible. Maybe they would have started, um, eventually, become more diplomatic in focus, but they weren't at that point during the Great Crusade, were they? With once Horus is made war master, they fucking kill everybody. World eaters more than anyone else. Like they, it didn't matter. Diplomacy didn't matter if the the pre nails the pre heresy. World eaters were sent to comply someone pretty much dead um so yeah there, there, there's a, there's a, a poor parallel there i guess but um regardless i think there is there's an intention there and if there's not it's fucking weird but of this uh this parallel between the expectations of men um and to a to a lot to a in a wider sense to everybody because we all have these roles we're told to fill right and these emotions we're told we're supposed to feel or not feel and and that's the nails in all of us controlling us and, and everything and i don't mean that in a kind of like conspiracy theory way i just mean i think we all sense it right regardless of your particular politics or uh, your your opinion on um, things like toxic masculinity or white privilege or if you agree with these things which I, I challenge you to think why you don't if you don't but you have to recognize that society isn't fair it's not fair to anyone but right now we're to, you know considering the the scope of this as, as a mental health issue and especially from the position of a man but only because i i am a man and that's what i can talk about i, I, I am not elevating these things above experiences of other people right um because there are very real challenges and oppressions and uh fucking terrible things that happen um but this is, you know, International Women's Day or Black History Month or whatever. Well, what? Or where's White History Month or where's Men's Day or whatever? Well, here you fucking go. If if you've ever said that, here you go. This comment section right here is for you. It's for us. It, it's fucking for everybody, right? But um, unless a particular comment thread opens up, um, which I would ask everyone to show respect. Um, but if, 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 for instance, someone uh, offers their perspective from a from a woman's point of view, or from a gay point of view, or a trans point of view, or a person, whatever, right? Respect that. Don't don't talk over them in that thread. You can create your own fucking commentary, and I will respond to you. And maybe some other people will have at it. Feel free. This is an open invitation. Just be respectful, okay? you want to be disrespectful fucking do it in email to me that's fine let's just I, I don't want hurtful shit right i, I don't want negative like stuff against people because of their gender or their sexual preference or anything i don't want any of that shit on my page right if you've got to get something like that off your chest and you, you're gonna say it well fucking email it to me right i'll argue with you there um okay all right so I, I, I need to start wrapping this up because i very much doubt anyone's fucking listening at this point but maybe you're unfortunate enough to be driving two hours and you made the mistake of only downloading this to listen to so for that i'm apologizing but i, I am getting close to wrapping this up so what i want 
finish with is how do you deal with this stuff um first of all like i mentioned if, if you are dealing with um some serious mental health issues or if you're dealing with any mental health issues if you're you're stressed out if you've had enough right now if, especially if you're you're feeling suicidal or feeling like you need to hurt yourself or hurt someone else um, I, w- I want you to reach out to professionals uh, your first stop, if, if if you're not already engaged in this, your first stop is to your general practitioner, your family doctor, your local doctor, the local health clinic. Any any medical service will be able to refer you to someone if you don't already have a contact in, you know, psychological or psychiatric, uh, psychiatry or, or something like that. If you don't already have a contact or a local, uh, you know, place or charity or uh, non-profit or anywhere that you can reach out to, your doctor, a doctor, the hospital go there and talk to someone and get a referral okay that's the first step if you're especially if if there's harm to you or someone as a potential thing that's going to happen um if there is a barrier to that um, and you you don't have a loved one or a friend um did like i said you can talk to me um i i, I don't want i i will talk to you but you know i i'm, I'm i've got a job right i've got a family um, I, I can't immediately respond to things. Uh, please don't come to me if, and, and you know, expecting an immediate response. This is not because I don't care about you. This is because I, I don't check my emails all the time. I do have to sleep at some point, things like that, right? But if, if you've got something that you just want to get off your chest and just bounce back and forth over email, um, you can, if, you, if you're feeling something right now, um, and you see me online in Discord or Facebook or, or wherever you you know may have access. I'm, if I can, if I see your message, I will respond to you. Okay, um, but I want you to. The first thing I'm going to be wanting you to do, or once we get over the initial hurdles, is let's get, let's get some help. Right. To that end, I'll have some links below. Um, hopefully, some resources, free resources. Um, you know, lists of phone numbers or websites that that you can use. Okay, it's certainly an emergency, but as plans for more long term care or treatment. Right. Um, if we're dealing with something that's maybe not as immediate, long term stress, depression, maybe um, anxiety, things like that. Things that you know m- maybe are a bit bit more common. A, bit harder to treat because they're, they're chronic um or you know they obviously they can be acute things as well but things that come and go perhaps or things that you you don't always feel the negative impact of you know maybe it's, it's one of those deals where you just have bad days talk to someone again you can talk to me again this is a deal of i, I have to manage my own life right i've got I, i'm not a qualified counselor or anything i will talk to you if if i'm literally the only person you can talk to and i don't mean that in a bad way i just want you to understand that if if you need someone i i can listen uh not as a long-term solution but i will be there as an immediate thing if i'm able to right um but find find a group find a forum um you know what um maybe i'll set up something in my discord like a private thing um, I'm, I'm not sure about the uh, legitimacy of that because whilst we have our pseudonyms on online, obviously there's, there's some shitty people out there. So it'd, it'd have to be a pretty. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I'm kind of just thinking off the top of my head right now. But um, I, I'm going to have links below with resources, okay? And I want you to consider those um, as a as a thing. Um, to get help long term um, and I'm going to recommend this to literally everybody absolutely everybody Reg- if, if you have never had a day in your life um, where you've felt any kind of depression or stress or anything if, if, if you are fortunate enough I don't care um, everyone should, should see a therapist of, of some sort once a month, once every three months once a week um mental health is health we see our gp or our family doctor or whoever once every six months probably which isn't often enough but it is what it is and you know if, if you're a fucking idiot like me it's less than that right because of, we're men and we, we we don't feel pain or sickness 
mental health is hell and a counselor a therapist psychologist what whatever particular uh, professional avenue you feel most comfortable with um, and again your GP can refer you here if necessary or you can look it up online um, talk to someone like literally you don't need to feel that you need a problem to go getting a checkup from your GP you're probably you know feeling fine the day you go for your yearly or your six month medical checkup right and they just you know they measure you and uh, take your weight and your blood pressure and all, all the basic checkups just to chart progress over a period of time your mental health is the same fucking thing um, obviously it's uh, less physiological and more you know personal based questions how are you feeling how does whatever but it fucking do it right um, therapy shh, needs to be absolutely fucking normalized absolutely 100% normalized for everybody for children for adults for everyone for men women every everyone should have a therapist um I would love us to never need them, right? But we do. There's so much going on in, in, in our lives because of how society is structured and because of just, just, just fucking things, man. Just things that that get us down. That, that, that just Life is stress. Everything in the world is stress, is a stressor to us. The sunlight is a stressor to us. Like, literally, like talking is a stressor thinking is a stress these are things which our body has to and our mind have has to change our physiological you know patterns to deal with like to you know stop us from getting fucking skin cancer from the sun or well, I, I know i'm rambling a bit here but when i say a stressor a stressor doesn't necessarily cause stress right but it's something that we have to expend energy to deal with and and, and this is from a, a, I mean that very scientifically speaking, not like karma or energy or any of that shit, right? Life is stressful, and some of the stresses in life cause us actual stress. What we, the common parlance of stress, right? Psychological discomfort or depression or feeling bad or sad or whatever you may refer to it as, you know. These, this, this shit's real. And having a fucking, uh, someone to talk to. Who, who knows a little bit how to talk about this stuff is going to help. It absolutely is going to help. No matter how big or small your problems, I hope you're in a position where you can you can have a professional you can talk to. But definitely if you need it, right? If, you, if, you're, if you've got some shit going on right now. Um, so let's tie this back into the hobby a bit, okay? I know this is like a hard subject, you know, and, and it feels like I'm t kind of cheapening it. But you know what? Like, my, I, I, some of my best personal, like, uh, times when I'm happiest is when I'm fucking playing 40k, right? It's what I love. It, I love it. I enjoy making content, right? As I've said, I feel relaxed sometimes when I'm when I'm painting. Um, I, I love reading. I, I read every night. I've read every night since I was like 12 excuse me since i was 12 years old i've read the entire horus heresy three times start to finish not all the mini novel uh, novellas and stuff or short stories those are more like some of the my favorite like the garvial local and stuff i've read and obviously any world eaters related stuff but every every proper horus heresy book i've read three times i've read like the night lords trilogy four times i've read eisenhorn ravenor and the first beckwin book uh I want to say five times, like, like I'm, I'm a glutton for 40k reading, right? Um, I'm rereading the Siege of Terror for the second, or I'm rereading the Siege of Terror series right now. But I, I love reading, right? But playing 40k is my is my thing, is my jam. It's like it, it's 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 where I you know release the right chemicals in my brain, right? Um, just the rush of it, the the, the testing my metal against an opponent. Um, so whatever it is that that's your jam that that floats your boat that, that does it for you right in in this hobby because you're obviously into 40k if you've somehow f survived the last fucking hour and a half or whatever it is of this 
you've got some dedication to 40k and to this channel and you know i i love you for being here right but if um if you if you are listening you must love 40k a hell of a lot whatever it is do that thing painting playing reading listening whatever writing do it okay do more of it do the things that make you happy do the things that bring you up that keep you going that make you look forward to tonight to tomorrow to next week to the next tournament to uh, your 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 next uh, sitting hobby with your friends whether you're doing it over zoom chats or whether you're literally you know you're in a position where you can meet up with your friends and sit and paint and drink a beer or whatever it is you do that makes you happy do that thing and do more of it do it more often fuck the bullshit in the world that brings you down right if you've got to take a goddamn day off fucking work because you need some some time to be happy that you you do that you you you'll figure out the bills I'm not condoning, you know, any any like ridiculous behavior here, but your health, your happiness, your mental health far surpasses the grind. Fuck the man. Let's take care of yourself, okay? Do do the thing that you like. Do the thing you like, okay? Do the thing that makes you happy. Um Okay. Um got another quote here um kind of lost the i I had my little quotes set up to be at certain points and i i I apologize but um to the person who sent this quote in if, if you happen to be listening um this hobby provides me something that i've lacked for a while my hobby used to be just video games at most but now with modeling painting and playing 40k pretty consistently on most every saturday at my friendly local gaming store it's a pretty positive change see right there just just that access to the thing that that person loves is, is is a positive thing do the things which are positive for you do the things which make you happy enjoyment whatever you need use the use 40k to be a better you okay to live another day to live to 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 get more enjoyment to take every fucking thing you can from life right to do the things which make you happy okay I've gone on long enough now, so sincere, massive thanks for, for, for listening, for the for the two or three of you that have made it this far, if, if that many. My analytics will tell me. Um, just be, be, be cool out there, folks, okay? Um, if you need something, you can email me, you can message me. Like I said, I'll do my best to get back to you, and I'll help you out if I can. Um, but yeah, I love you all. Stay healthy, stay safe, and kill main bone.